Modern mirrorless lenses like this one here give you a great balance between sharpness and creamy out of focus bokeh. And in Lightroom, you can sharpen your photos even further. But there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. And in today's video, I'll share with you three sliders that you need to be aware of to make sure you don't make a critical error when editing your photos in Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, in photography, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, and I think sharpness is definitely one of them. Sure, we don't want our photos to be blurry, no one wants that, but you can overly sharp your images, especially with modern digital cameras that are incredibly sharp if you use the right lens. It can make your photos look grainy and just kind of off-putting to look at, and I find it's a tendency, a lot of beginner photographers, I know I did it when I was a beginner, that I just end up over sharpening my photos and it ruins the image. So how can we find the right balance? Well, actually, I think there's three sliders that can be really helpful if you use the right amount. And that is the texture, clarity, and dehaze slider. Now, if you didn't know these sliders, they're very popular to use. I've used them in almost every single one of my edits. They're found in the basics panel. So if you go to the develop panel and then drop down to basics, you can find them just under your tonal range. That's texture, clarity, and dehaze. And to be honest with you, they pretty much do the same thing, but a difference in degrees and where they actually affect your photo. Texture, as the name says, it increases and decreases the amount of texture within your photo. Great way to naturally sharpen your images. Clarity, again, very similar, increases the clarity of your image. And it's very similar to contrast, but more on a pixel-based level. So pixel to pixel, it will look at the different colors and you can increase and decrease the amount of contrast between each one of those pixels. And then obviously that will affect your photo globally. And then lastly, dehaze, again, kind of says what the name does on the tin, it removes haze. And what it does is it increases contrast between the mid-tones and highlights of your photo. They're all great sliders, but you need to be careful on how much you use them because they're incredibly powerful, especially the clarity slider. So take this photo here as an example. It's a recent photo I've taken uh, with the Northern Lights. Really happy with this photo, but obviously when taking photos of the sky, sometimes you have a little bit of haze, sometimes a little bit of mist. In, in this particular case, on the right-hand side of our photo, there's a little bit of haze appearing because I think their clouds are coming in. It was a little bit foggy or starting to become foggy in the photo. So what we can do, go to the texture slider here, and what we can do is actually increase the texture of the foreground. So we can go ahead and add in texture here. So I'd probably go for plus to minus 20. That seems to get the best results for most photos. Clarity, on the other hand, is, this is the really powerful, this is the, the super source within your images. Use just the right amount, you know, you get a nice spicy, you know, it's, it's quite nice. But if you use too much, It'll blow your tongue and it'll, it'll ruin your images. It really does. So what I'll do is I'll just add in a little bit and you can see how it affects the image. If I go really too far, you can see it's adding way too much contrast. Everything looks super gritty. Look at the bottom here. Just way too much definition. And it's really emphasized all that ISO noise in the image, which is something we do want to avoid. So my rule for clarity is I don't go more than 20. Another tip you can take away is if you're actually editing anything with skin tones, any portraits or any studio photos, actually use negative clarity. You can even use negative clarity in a mask with the skin tones. And what that does, it just softens them slightly. Again, you don't want really strong, very sharp skin tones bringing out all the imperfections. No one wants that in your images. So you can actually negatively use it in your photos. Now, landscape photos like this, clarity can really help to emphasize it. But again, be very subtle with it. And the last one, again, very similar, dehaze. If we use too much dehaze, yeah, that's just ruined the photo. It just, everything looks too strong, too striking, too gritty. So again, I don't go more than plus 20 there. Now you can do plus 20, plus 20, plus 20, it ends up looking quite nice. Again, that will naturally affect the overall exposure. So you might want to do is actually go back in and just ever so slightly fix that. And you can see how it's affected in the histogram. But yeah, my big major thing to beginner photographers or even advanced photographers that just don't really use texture clarity and dehaze, they're great, but in small doses. Think of it like a chili. Really good in small doses, but if you use too much, just way too strong and ends up ruining your photo. So be really careful with the texture, clarity, and dehaze. They can be really helpful, but at the same time, can also ruin a photo.